<clears throat> Hello guys, um, Keith Bickert here again. I'm going to break down the uh, data that um, Emily Udding and I got from Pigeon Creek and then Pigeon River. Uh, and while at the same time, also be showing you guys uh, the rail biz stream app and where to find it. Um, it'll help me because you can use it. Uh, it identifies all your water quality and ecosystem attributes. It also populates my database, um, which would be bonus. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, share screens with you and show you where we're at. Okay, close out that. Now, starting with the Rail Biz Stream app, if you have never used it before, the address is right here, uh, new.bizstreamapps.com front slash rail. Um, and then from there, whole description of the rail project is Riparian Area Integrated Learning Project. Um, if you are curious about how to um, get other resources for this, uh, including links back to Creek Connections, uh, you can just go to my webpage right here which gives you the whole breakdown from teacher resources, um, our water quality data that we uh, do with Creek Connections um, at Allegheny College, in addition to a whole plethora of um, aquatic ecology teacher resources. But anyways, let me get back to the rail project, uh, BizStream app. <clears throat> so here are all the reports and you have access to all of them, but how do you make a report? Um, Click on enter your sample. And from there, you got to give me your name, uh, your email address, the date you sampled, where you sampled. If you don't know the GPS coordinates, don't worry, we embedded a map onto here. So you just need to find your location and click and go. So for instance, we were right over here at Pigeon Creek. So our first sample location was Pigeon Creek right here. And then our second location is three and a half miles downstream where Pigeon Creek ties into Pigeon River. So we were down right here. So again, this is real easy to use. You just click and it automatically tags all of your data with the GPS coordinate. Now, if you know uh, something about aquatic macroinvertebrates, real simple, you just type in the family name uh, of your sample. So, uh, Heptigenide, oh, sorry, um, hydro, um, so uh, boom, uh, your numbers there. Um, amphipod, my buddy, the scud, uh, three of those, so on. Or <clears throat> if you don't know um, your aquatic macroinvertebrates and you have this handy um, on your phone or tablet while out in the stream, um, I did put a uh, dichotomous key uh, to help you uh, key out your macroinvertebrates and everything is already paired up with its primary functional feeding guild as well as its family tolerance. So even put cute little pictures at the end to make sure, hey, that's what you got. Okay, close out on that. Once you get all that and once you give me your story about your area from uh, what the riparian uh, corridor looks like, what your substrate looks like, what your discharge is, you hit submit. Once you hit submit, it will bring up these reports right here. So let's go ahead and get into uh, these reports. I already have called up um, Pigeon Creek and Pigeon River. So from here, these are the results of Pigeon River and these are the results from Pigeon Creek, which is right here. Okay, 
So starting with our uh, Pigeon Creek, which was furthest upstream, there's our GPS coordinates. And that water quality ended up um, with a Hillsnoff index score of 5.5139. So it was fair. Um, wasn't exceptionally good, but it was fair. Now, comparing that, moving downstream, now we're going to go look at Pigeon Rivers. Pigeon River um, didn't have as clean of water, uh, had a Hillsnoff index score of 6.4563. Now, um, one thing about these reports that we do uh, put on there is we show you how we calculated that. So looking at the index of um, Pigeon uh, Creek versus Pigeon River. So Pigeon Creek, we had the prong guild uh, mayfly, we had uh, the scud, we had the net spinning caddisfly, we had uh, the non-biting midge, we had the uh, biting midge, we had the black fly larvae, we had the green stone fly, we had the uh, water snipe fly larvae, uh, we had the broad winged damsel fly larvae, we had the fingernail clam, we had the aquatic earthworm, and then we had a planorbid snail. Um, again, like what I said, you just plug the stuff in and it does all the pairing for the primary functional feeding group and family tolerance. So, how do you calculate the Hills and Off index? You total all of your family tolerance values, 397. And then you divide it by your total number of individuals, 72. So 397 divided by 72 gives you the Hills Mouth Water Quality Index score of 5.5139. Looking at Pigeon River, uh, three and a half miles downstream, you see that we got a whirligig beetle. You see we got a scud. You see that we got two more of those broadwing damselflies. Uh, we did get a crawling water beetle. We did get a biting midge, 20 of them, and then 28 non-biting midge. We did get a green stonefly as well from there. A humpless case caddisfly, two of those. Uh, fingernail clam, black fly. Uh, larvae, as well as a rat tail maggot, one of my coolest um, maggots. I love those things. You hang them by your finger. It looks like you have a booger hanging at the end of your nose. But looking at that, we had a calculated FTV total of 665 divided by 103 individuals. It gave us a uh, fairly poor water quality score of 6.4563. Now let's go to the ecosystem attribute reports. So starting with uh, Pigeon Creek, again, there's our taxa, again, all paired up with the primary functional feeding groups. Again, we break it down for you so that you see our total number of primary functional feeding groups. And starting off with the first uh, attribute, the autotrophy heterotrophy index, also called the PR index. Uh, the PR index or autotrophy heterotrophy index, it looks at whether um, the system, the stream system is dependent on the input of organic matter, leaf litter, woody debris, other alectinous organic matter. And if it is dependent on uh, the input of organic matter, it is a heterotrophic stream. Uh, if it has primary producers as its main energy component, uh, like algae and other autochthonous organic matter, then it is deemed an autotrophic stream. Uh, any ratio that is greater than 0.75 for this will be deemed an autotrophic ecosystem. Now, what would make it autotrophic? If you have a lot of scrapers, why? Because scrapers eat algae need algae in a stream for scrapers to be there. Resources dictate population. So breaking down the numbers that we got today at Pigeon Creek, we only got two scrapers. Uh, those were those planorbid snails. And then we had 14 shredders, 26 gathering collectors, and 28 filtering collectors. All those uh, net spinning caddisflies that were, were on that big log I picked up. Um, and that gives us a calculated autotrophy heterotrophy index score of 0 0.0294, uh, making it a heterotrophic system. So 
Pigeon Creek is dependent mostly primarily on the input of organic matter. Uh, and if you remember back in the video while I was out in the stream that, yeah, even though that uh, deciduous uh, trees are around, um, but further, further upstream uh, that you didn't get to see was a tremendous amount of conifers. Uh, your pine trees. And uh, if you know anything about coniferous uh, forest and leaf litter, it takes a while for that food to get conditioned so that shredders can eat it. What does conditioned food mean? Uh, think of cheese and crackers. You don't want to eat crackers unless there's cheese on them. So the cheese on the cracker for your shredders are your mold, your bacteria, your diatoms, your fungus that then um, congregate onto the leaf litter that begins to break down that leaf litter so then the shredders can eat it. Otherwise, they're just eating leaf litter and there's no protein, there's no lipids in there. Uh, the stuff they need for growth, they need to eat the diatoms, they need to eat the cheese on the crackers. So this next attribute, the CPOM, FPOM index, looks at what type of organic matter falls in and how long does it take to condition. So looking at that, we got to look at the uh, invertebrates that eat the leaf litter, shredders, the conditioned leaf litter, versus the aquatic macroinvertebrates that eat the already broken down leaf litter. So CPOM gets broken down into FPOM. Of course, particular organic matter gets broken down into fine particular organic matter. So looking at this, um, Pigeon Creek only had 14 shredders, okay, those were primarily the scud, and then they had 26 gathering collectors and 28 filtering collectors. Gathering collectors were the biting and non-biting midge, and then the filtering collectors were the net spinning caddisflies, the hydrospicidae. <clears throat> Looking at that then, so number of shredders divided by the number of total number of collectors, we got a CPOM FPOM index of 0 0.2593. Whenever that value is less than 0 0.5, it indicates a spring summer shredder stream system. What does a spring summer shredder stream system mean? It means that typically the organic matter is going to be conifers and trees, leaf litter that takes a long time to condition. Uh, if that stream was moving through the majority of a deciduous uh, forest, like your beech, your maple, um, your hickory and whatnot, it doesn't take long to get cheese on that cracker. So if that were the case, then this would have been a fall winter shredder stream system. But because of all the coniferous forests upstream and not too far upstream from where we were sampling, uh, this shows to be a spring summer shredder stream system. The next attribute, TFPOM, BFPOM index, again for uh, Pigeon Creek. This looks at, of the broken down organic matter, is most of the organic matter moving in the water column or is it settled at the bottom? So. TFPOM is your transported fine particular organic matter. Your BFPOM is benthic fine particular organic matter. So here we got to look at the invertebrates that eat the food suspended in the water, your filtering collectors, and you divide that by the number of aquatic invertebrates that need that organic matter sitting at the bottom, the gathering collectors. In this case, again, that criteria ratio is 0.5. And this is showing us that most of that fine particular organic matter is moving in the water column. And you can go back and look at the video. You see that the water in Pigeon Creek is moving much faster than when we were in Pigeon River. Um, again, all those hydrocycids, those that spinning caddis fly, resources dictate population. We had 28 of those. There's got to be food there to support them, which makes sense that most of our fine particular organic matter is in transport. The next attribute, channel stability index. Uh, channel stability index, we are looking at uh, the likelihood that the stream channel can be shifted due to erosion, uh, high flow, and whatnot. And a little bit of geologic history of Western Michigan. Um, here in Allendale and West Olive, where we were sampling, um, 
which is just uh, southwest of us, about eight miles southwest of where I'm recording right now, um, that was all old Lake Chicago bed. So it's very, very, very sandy. If you ever get the chance to drive to Grand Rapids and hop on Lake Michigan Drive and drive it straight out to Lake Michigan, you'll notice a transition from a very, very glacial um, terrain where you have a lot of just uh, glacial deposition, a lot of moraines, and then you can definitely tell right at Grand Valley where you start to transition into that lake bed. Um, so with a sandy substrate, um, you're typically gonna have an unstable channel, but curious with this, um, our numbers did show to have a stable channel. So you look at the invertebrates that need a hard surface. Your scrapers need hard flat surfaces for algae to grow on. Your filtering collectors need a hard surface to attach their nets onto. But if you go back to the video, you notice that those hydrocycids were not attached to the stream bed. They were attached to a lot of the woody debris sitting in the stream. So looking at your scrapers and filtering collectors that need the hard surface divided by the shredders and gathering collectors that do not need a hard surface add up those totals divide them out and we had a channel stability index of 0 0.75 it's greater than 0.5 so it indicates that that channel is stable the final attribute is the top-down predator control index and this index is a little bit deceiving because Although it does look at predators, it looks more at uh, the food that the predators eat. It measures whether the prey have a short life cycle or whether they have a long life cycle. And if you go back to ecology, looking at K-selected and R-selected species, your R-selected species are the ones that have the short life cycle and reproduce quite a bit. They make a ton of offspring and then they die, as opposed to your K-selected that have a long life cycle, take a long time to get um, offspring. So if you have um, predators that are eating prey that are mostly K-selected, resources dictate population, you're not going to have as many predators. So this attribute, we're looking at anything that falls within the 0.1 to 0.2 range. Uh, the 0.1 to 0.2 range, which kind of ties back to the 10% rule in ecology, where you don't want to have too many predators, but you don't want too few of predators. Um, so a 0.1 to 0.2 range is a healthy system. In our case, though, we had 0 0.02 Eight, six. That is an unhealthy balance. It's a low number and it indicates then that the prey species that we do have are typically K-selected. They take a long time to reproduce, so those numbers are down. Resources dictate population and that's probably why we had such a low number of predators. Now, that's the story for the ecosystem attributes of Pigeon Creek. Let's look at what the uh, numbers were showing for Pigeon River. Again, if you remember back to the video, we were thinking that our numbers here should show that the organic matter as it moves downstream gets metabolized before it hits out to Lake Michigan. So looking at this, let me refresh this. Here are our numbers for Pigeon River. Our autotrophy heterotrophy index, we didn't have any scrapers. There were no scrapers in here. So this shows as a heterotrophic system. Go back to the video and you notice a tremendous amount of woody debris uh, laying in um, Pigeon River. Our CPOM, FPOM index, is it a spring, summer, or fall, winter? This uh, does show that it is a fall winter shredder stream system. This could be attributed to because we're further downstream where we're more in the deciduous forest and further away from the coniferous forest that Pigeon Creek is in. The TFPOM, BFPOM index. It's a pretty slow moving river. It gets much wider and uh, in the portion of the video we were at was just a little inlet of where the um, kayaks get launched. And in this case, this is showing that our fine particular organic matter is in storage. Channel stability index, again, uh, this 
is pretty uh, indicative of a lot of streams around Ottawa County because of the Lake Chicago bed. Uh, very, very sandy substrate. This is an unstable channel. Uh, Top-down predator control. Again, this matches right up with our Pigeon Creek numbers earlier. This shows it is an unhealthy balance. It's actually pretty darn close to um, Pigeon Creek uh, at 0 0.03. We had one more predator than what we did over there and uh, otherwise our numbers were pretty similar with our scrapers, shredders, filtering collectors, and gathering collectors. Now, if you would like some more detailed numbers, again, on my webpage, on my webpage, you can access all of these. If you go onto my webpage here, I have detailed calculators, and these detailed calculators go into a little bit more uh, detail. So it walks you through what uh, water quality indices are going to be measured. You plug in your numbers, and it does the calculating for you. Uh, attributes again, it explains each one of the attributes. You once you plug it in here. I have it so it already carries it right over here and it gives you all of the uh, calculated attributes. And then uh, biotic uh, indices, I uh, added this because I like to measure diversity as well. So I measure it using the Shannon Weiner diversity index. I give you the taxa richness and then this also I have it set to calculate the PILU equitability index. Um, which I like so much better than the Simpson index. It just makes more sense to me. So looking at that, again, once you plug in your stuff, it does the math for you. So if we're looking here, Shannon index, it wasn't very diverse. And if you look at our um, PILU index, it wasn't terribly even, although it was much uh, more even uh, in this system, in this Right here, we're looking at Pigeon Creek as opposed to our evenness in Pigeon River. Um, Pigeon River was not as even as Pigeon Creek. So um, again, I um, hope uh, that addresses some of our data that we got from Pigeon Creek and Pigeon River. And if you have any questions, again, um, shoot me an email or uh, leave a message uh, in the message uh, below. Um, otherwise, check out the video uh, playlist of Does It Fart. Uh, Dr. Uh, Danny Rabiotti and Dr. Nick Crusoe wrote an excellent book. Check it out and hear from a bunch of scientists from all over the world. I do the octopus chapter. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.